would say based on, at least for me, how, how my clients kind of check in and say, let me make sure I'm understanding or can we walk through all of the components of my dog's treatment. This is fairly complicated. At least personally, don't find that threatening. I feel like that's more, that's information gathering. I think it's fun when people are this involved in, in their pet's care. Welcome to Dog Cancer Answers, where we help you help your dog with cancer. Hello, hello, I'm Molly Jacobson. I'm editor-in-chief at dogcancer.com, where we believe in better information so you have no regrets tomorrow. On today's special episode, we hear from a listener about her dog with transitional cell carcinoma, more commonly called TCC, and the use of radiation. James Jacobson, founder of Dog Podcast Network, is our host for today, and Dr. Megan Duffy, a veterinary oncologist whose compassionate and wise words of advice are always welcome here on Dog Cancer Answers, is handling the medical advice portion of the show. So today's question comes from Heather in New Jersey, whose dog has transitional cell carcinoma, and her veterinary oncologist is recommending radiation, but her friends have never heard of it. So we're going to look at what Heather's concerns are, and we're also going to get some well-earned advice from Dr. Megan Duffy about how to approach conversations with veterinarians. So whether your dog has transitional cell carcinoma or not, I definitely recommend you stick around because Dr. Megan Duffy's advice is spot on. Dr. Megan Duffy is one of the many veterinarians and veterinary oncologists, cancer researchers, and science writers who contributes to our website, dogcancer.com, to make sure that you're getting the best advice you can online that you can then take back to your veterinarian to see how it applies in your dog's case. If you are thinking you have your own question about dog cancer you wanna ask, go to dogcancer.com slash ask and enter your question or share your story. And now let's get right to James Jacobson and Dr. Megan Duffy talking about transitional cell carcinoma and answering Heather's question. Dr. Megan Duffy, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, it's always a pleasure. Today is a listener line question. We have lots of people who listen to this show and watch it on YouTube. And of course, members of our community at dogcancersupport.com on Facebook. And it's a question that we got from Heather, who is calling in from New Jersey. She has a question about using radiation with her dog with TCC. Let's listen to the call. Hi, my name is Heather. I'm calling from New Jersey. I'm calling because my dog was diagnosed with uh, transitional cell carcinoma. We actually had um, the, the tumor, which was actually in her bladder, removed about a month ago. And the vet um, encouraged us to go see an oncologist, which we did, and she is recommending chemo and radiation. I was calling because um, I've spoken to a few people who have either gone through something similar with their dogs and they were surprised about the radiation. Uh, Their dog was just treated with chemo. So I was calling to see if radiation is definitely something that should be considered or if chemo is is the main um, method. So um, if somebody can let me know if this question could be addressed, that would be great. Thank you so much for your time. Dr. Duffy, what do you have to say about that? So there are a couple of things to unpack in this question. Mm -hmm. And usually when we're dealing with bladder tumors, so many of them can't be removed surgically or can't be addressed with any other local control. And we think about surgery and radiation as our kind of local treatments that kind of by default, we're often stuck with chemo, you know, plus Mm -hmm. minus a a non-steroid anti-inflammatory. And that's kind of our mainstay of therapy because of that plumbing issue and the anatomy involved. So, so this situation is already better than the average dog with bladder cancer, if there is such a thing, because, hey, we've already got that tumor out surgically. And so recommending radiation on top of it tells me that there may be something about that local situation that isn't completely 
gone with surgery. Mm -hmm. Maybe we didn't get big margins. Maybe there was some other kind of abnormal looking tissue in the bladder or something residual that we're worried about. So I, I would wonder, is there something else locally in that little bladder that we are trying to address with radiation? And that's why it's a little bit of a different recommendation. And I think that's definitely worth asking the oncologist about to say, hey, what, what are we doing with the radiation therapy right now? We've done surgery. Is there something microscopic that we're worried about? And then the chemotherapy recommendation, you know, certainly still makes sense. This is a disease that we know can grow back, that sometimes microscopic bits of the bladder may be affected, but we don't know it yet. So we're still trying to cover all of our bases. We don't want this to spread. So I think it's worth asking, what about my individual dog makes radiation a recommendation? Because it definitely has value and it has use for bladder tumors, but there's there's probably some other detail that is making that come to the forefront as, as a recommendation. Okay. So from your experience, when you're dealing with TCC, surgery is the best. Mm -hmm. And then you normally do chemotherapy mm -hmm. and rarely, at least from your experience, would, would you use radiation unless there was something really unusual about the case? Often for me, radiation is when I have a tumor that couldn't be addressed with surgery at the beginning. Okay. And either maybe we're starting to run out of chemotherapy options or we're getting toward that obstruction of either urethra or ureter. So something in the plumbing where urine isn't going where it's supposed to go, pressure is building up, things are not good, and we need to take down that inflammation in that tumor to sort of de-obstruct that spot. So so for me, I'm usually using radiation either because chemo's not doing it anymore or we've got something that needs to be de-obstructed in a hurry. But the fact that she had surgery and presumably with good margins, then it probably wouldn't be something that you would recommend in this case. Right. That's where I would wonder, is there some other detail to this individual dog situation that would maybe change that recommendation? Well, how do you have that conversation with, with, a, with, with an oncologist? How would you coach her to, to have this conversation with her doctor? I think it may be something where... You know, if she can sit down with her oncologist and say, gosh, there's a lot of moving parts in my dog's treatment. Can you walk me through each part of the therapy and kind of what we're doing with it? What's the goal of radiation and, and what is radiation going to help with? And then what's the goal of the chemo? What is the chemo going to help with? Because if it is sort of looking at additional local therapy and then systemic therapy, or actually there was, you know, a margin that was incomplete from your dog's surgery and I'm trying to get that, then, then it kind of makes more sense. And sometimes it's with those multimodal therapies that I know are great and they often can give us really good outcomes. It's easy to get lost in, I'm not sure which piece is doing which thing. Mm -hmm. And it may be just worth kind of walking through step by step what's doing what here. So I mean, I'm just trying, I guess, more trying to get into the like the dynamics of how to talk mm. to your vet. Because I think, you know, as we've talked about on other episodes, there are only a few hundred veterinary oncologists in North America. And, and obviously you guys are very busy and you know what you know. And when a client kind of checks, uh, maybe they contact dog cancer answers or they check on something and say, that doesn't seem exactly right. What's the most welcome, most appropriate way that you would suggest um, someone approach their doctor, you know, like the words and also like what kind of pushback might they expect and what would happen if the oncologist was pushing back? I would say based on, at least for me, how, how my clients kind of check in and say, Hey, let me make sure I'm understanding, or can we walk through all of the components of my dog's treatment? This is fairly complicated. You know, I, at least personally, don't find that threatening. I feel like that's more, that's information gathering. That's help mm -hmm. me understand what's happening. So I have that sort of empowered feeling to know exactly why this is going on. So, I mean, at least for me, I would never take that offensively. I think it's, I think it's fun when people are this involved in, in their pet's care. So right. for me, getting that as a call or an email or a, Hey, the next time we meet, can we just sit down and go over this so I can feel comfortable about all of the steps that might be some of the, the verbiage or the the context of, hey, can we just talk through how all this is fitting together so I can feel comfortable? Kind of a loaded question, but 
do you welcome clients who are you know as proactive as as heather is here in terms of like going out and and researching and checking assumptions and and stuff like that how, how do you personally receive that Oh, absolutely. You know, in a way I love it mm. because it means I have, you know, clients in situations where they say, I've done this reading and research. I'm really interested. I want to know I'm doing the best for my pet. Have you heard about this? Do you know about that? Tell me why this is being recommended over that. And it really opens up to a conversation about what is the latest recommendation or what is the newest drug? Is this appropriate for your pet? Or, hey, this is something that I have personal experience with that maybe isn't published, but how do you feel about X, Y, or Z? And we can really make a very personalized recommendation that everybody feels that much better about because we've had that conversation. So I think it's a lot of fun when we do that. Well, that is why we are so glad that you are part of our team at dogcancer.com. Um, you, Dr. Duffy, and, and, and and all the vets on our team, you know, share that approach. And, and if you're listening or watching this podcast, know that there's a lot more information uh, at dogcancer.com and uh, great vets like Dr. Duffy. Dr. Duffy, thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, thank you. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this was of service to you. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss another episode or any of our other fun things we share here on YouTube. And I will see you at dogcancer.com slash ask so you can share your own dog cancer story or share a question for a future show. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Thank you for listening to Dog Cancer Answers. If you'd like to connect, please visit our website at dogcancer.com or call our listener line at 808-868-3200. And here's a friendly reminder that you probably already know. This podcast is provided for informational and educational purposes only. It's not meant to take the place of the advice you receive from your dog's veterinarian. Only veterinarians who examine your dog can give you veterinary advice or diagnose your dog's medical condition. Your reliance on the information you hear on this podcast is solely at your own risk. If your dog has a specific health problem, contact your veterinarian. Also, please keep in mind that veterinary information can change rapidly. Therefore, some information may be out of date. Dog Cancer Answers is a presentation of Maui Media in association with Dog Podcast Network.